Welcome to the July edition of This Month in Payroll for 2024. I'm Rowan Geddes, National Leader of PwC's Payroll Advisory and Operations Practice, and Happy New Financial Year. This month sees the regulators focusing on how to transform several of the legislative initiatives that were passed last year into action. And so we will discuss the looming introduction of the Right to Disconnect Law and the Fair Work Commission's targeted modern awards review aimed at incorporating areas of focus such as job security, work from home and part-time employment. In addition, we will discuss new payroll tax annual return requirements in New South Wales, which signify a leap forward in data sharing. And we're pleased to announce our next guest speaker for our Workforce Leaders Forum. But first, the right to disconnect. On the 26th of August, the right to disconnect laws that were introduced in the Closing Loopholes Bill No. 2 will come into effect for any business with more than 15 employees. The right to disconnect laws allow an employee to reasonably refuse to monitor, read or respond to contact, calls, texts, emails from their employer or a third party such as a client or a customer outside of working hours. The right to disconnect now forms one of the protected attributes under the Fair Work Act, which means that employers cannot take adverse action against an employee for reasonably refusing out-of-work hours contact. Whether a refusal is reasonable depends on several factors, including the reason for the contact, how the contact was made, for example via phone, email, text, the level of disruption caused to the employee, whether the employee is paid to remain available to perform work during the period in which the contact is made, or for working additional hours outside of the ordinary hours of work the nature of the employee's role, including their level of responsibility, the employee's personal circumstances, such as their family or carer responsibilities, and whether the contact is required under a relevant Commonwealth, state or territory law. In this case, refusal is not allowed. Where there is a dispute about an employee's right to disconnect, employers and employees now have the right to raise the dispute with the Fair Work Commission. However, In the Fair Work Commission's implementation report on the right to disconnect, it makes it clear that before an application can be made to the Commission, the employer and employee must first try to resolve the dispute through normal workplace level discussions. The looming right to disconnect laws will require employers to consider their current employment and business practices, which may include 1. Developing an employee policy or a guideline about the right to disconnect which outlines the business's expectations relevant to specific roles. Secondly, management education regarding reasonable versus unreasonable employee contact outside of normal working hours, as well as supporting management in addressing employee concerns about unreasonable contact. And thirdly, changes to onboarding programs to ensure they clearly communicate with employees the business expectations about out-of-hours contact to set this standard from the outset of employment. The right to disconnect laws are new and will surely be tested through the Fair Work Commission over time, and so we will keep appraised as that occurs. Award updates. We've spoken previously about the request made out of the Fair Work Commission by Workplace Relations Minister Tony Burke to consider how to incorporate several areas of focus, such as job security provisions and work and care issues, into the modern award system. These possible areas of focus arose from the 2022 Job Summit and the Senate's Work and Care Inquiry. In response, last September, the Fair Work Commission initiated a targeted award review to consider how to make these adjustments, as well as tackling an additional goal of making seven of the broadest awards easier to use. These awards were the Children's Services Award, the Clark's Private Sector Award, Fast Food Industry Award, the General Retail Industry Award, the HIGA, the Hospitality Industry General Award, the Restaurant Industry Award, and the SHADS Award, the Social Community Home Care and Disability Services Industry Award. In an indication of how complex these new entitlements are, the Fair Work Commission this month wound up its review, with a report acknowledging a lack of consensus from stakeholders on key issues, which prevented them from from providing rulings. In response, the Fair Work Commission will now, on its own initiative, commence proceedings to deal with six priority matters – These include simplifying the retail award, developing a work from home term in the Clark's award, reviewing fixed term contract provisions in the higher education awards, 
and establishing a standard model for part-time employment for all awards that addresses hours of employment, including the number of hours to be worked, the days upon which work is to be performed, and the starting and finishing times of work, prescribed daily and weekly minimum hours of work, and the circumstances in which, and the means by which, working hours may be altered and additional hours may be worked. Justice Hatcher said that the bench will start considering the retail award and the work-from-home changes next month. As the proceedings concerning part-time employment are likely to be substantially wider in scope, they will not be initiated until a suitable time in 2025. Portable long service leave extended to New South Wales Community Services workers. As flagged a few months ago, the New South Wales Parliament this month passed legislation to provide portable long service leave to New South Wales based community service workers from the 1st of July 2024, bringing New South Wales in line with the portable long service leave schemes already in place for the ACT, Victorian, and the Queensland community service sectors. Under the new legislation, these workers will now get long service leave based on their time in the sector, rather than time employed by a single employer. Community service workers will now receive six weeks paid leave after seven years of employment in the sector, regardless of how many times they change contracts. The scheme will operate in a similar way as that for contract cleaners and the construction sector. Employer contributions will be funded by a levy of between 1.7% and 1.8% and will be administered by the New South Wales Long Service Leave Corporation. The legislation will also offer a once-off one-year service credit for workers who register within the first six months of commencement. And finally, we want to draw people's attention to a change in the landscape of payroll tax compliance in New South Wales, which commenced with the 2024 annual payroll tax returns just lodged. Those who were involved in preparing the returns will have noticed the requirement for several additional details and validations this year. Specifically, preparers were asked to answer a series of additional questions delving into various aspects of payroll tax components, with a particular focus on what is not included in the payroll tax return, or where there are material movements year on year. The questions cover contractor engagement and exclusions. Businesses now need to disclose their use of contractors and the particular exclusion that has been applied in relation to payments made. There was a particular focus on the use of the exemption for services provided to the public generally. Secondly, employment agency provisions. The new return process included questions regarding employment agency arrangements, which is an active audit focus area of Revenue New South Wales. Third, analysis of year-to-year variations. Employers will be asked to explain significant year-on-year differences in payroll components, such as salary and wages, fringe benefits, contractor payments, apprentice and trainee wages, and interstate wages. And finally, superannuation contributions. Explanations will also be required for discrepancies in superannuation contributions relative to salary and wages, presumably where a rate varies from the prevailing superannuation guarantee rate. This change marks a significant shift in the way that businesses will report and confirm the payroll tax obligations in New South Wales, because employers are now prompted to disclose information on what is not included in their self-assessment of taxable wages and otherwise validate deviations year upon year across the various components of the return. It can be assumed that the additional payroll tax information will be used to determine a risk profile of the employer and may allow Revenue New South Wales to perform their own targeted investigations or inquiries. This marks an initiative by Revenue New South Wales to implement a system that can enable data-led compliance similar to that of single-touch payroll. Accordingly, employers should review the current payroll tax practices to make sure that record-keeping is strong and that there is a close alignment between payroll and the preparer of the payroll tax return. Just before I wrap up, We are delighted to advise that our guest speaker for our next Workforce Leaders Forum will be Justice Hatcher, President of the Fair Work Commission. We are currently in the midst of the most significant workplace reforms since the introduction of the Fair Work Act, with the passing of the Secure Jobs Better Pay Act and the Closing Loopholes Acts. Justice Hatcher will discuss the Fair Work Commission's response to the changes that many of us are grappling with, including flexible work, the right to disconnect, changes to the definition of employee, gender pay equity, and same job, same pay. 
The Workforce Leaders Forum will take place on the 27th of August at 12.30pm, and you can register via the link on your screen. And that's it for our July edition of This Month in Payroll. If you would like to revisit any of our prior updates, they are available on our website at pwc.com.au forward slash payroll. And if you have any questions or need for support, please reach out to myself or your usual PwC contact. Until next time, have a great month in payroll.